Hi. Oh wait, Dolly's not in frame. Hang on. We gotta... Okay. Hi. Uh, this is my very first YouTube video ever. Um, so I am, you know, I have zero followers at this point. I don't even have a channel when I'm recording this. But I think it's important to say that because if there are people out there who are wanting to record videos, do it. That's what I'm doing and here we are. So I thought for my first video, I would obviously talk about myself so you could get a good idea whether you wanna come back, see me, hang out, chill, you know. Um, and while doing that, because I don't wanna just sit here and talk, um, I am going to straighten a wig of mine. Um, so I'll talk more about about her in a little bit. She is currently nameless. She had a name, but she's gonna get an overhaul, so she's gonna get a new name. So for right now, I think it's important to have like a nice, you know, time where she's in transition. So anyway, I, um, sorry, my chairs are very creaky and there's gonna be noises because I have two dogs and I'm not gonna lock them up to make a video. I'm just not, I love having them around. They make me happy. I've now made it two minutes into the video and I haven't even said my name. Hi, I don't think. My name is Summer. Um, I, I am American. I live in America. I currently reside in Texas. Um, it is not my forever home. My husband has a job where we move around a lot. And so I, um, yeah, we live here for now. I'm going to talk more about myself as I'm straightening the hair, so I don't want to share too much. So let's just hop into that part. So I am going to show you what I have around me right now to help me straighten this wig before I get like right into it. So obviously I have an old grubby straightener. I'm just kidding. This is, um, I mean, it is definitely old and it definitely has like burn stains from where I <laughs> left it hot for too long. Um, but you know what? She's an old trusty and she does the trick. And I have to be honest, if you're here for like a million haul videos, not going to happen. I try very, my husband and I both like try really hard to live our life <laughs> as minimally as we can. Um, I mean, <laughs> It is what it is. We still buy things. I still literally live in a whole house. You're like looking at my background filled with like stuff and you're like, wow, really? Minimalist? <laughs> yeah, I know. I know. Um, anyway, so old trusty, trusty straightener. Um, I do have a heat pad to protect my dining room table because I'm currently set up in my dining room. It had the best light of anywhere. So um, yeah, that's where we are. Um, Hopefully, I mean, I'm using a mix of indoor and outdoor light and it's actually rainy today in Texas. What? I'm loving it. Okay. Let's just tell the truth right now. I love rainy weather, so I'm loving it. Um, but that means that we're a little bit heavy on room lights. So it's going to be a little orange, a little weird. Um, and of course the light outside might change. So there you go. Again, not a professional YouTuber. Um, I currently have zero followers. So, I mean, there you go. Um, I have a heat protectant. So the wig that I am styling right now is a human hair wig. Again, I'll talk more about her as we go. Um, and the heat protectant spray that I have is from Sally Beauty. It is Ion brand styling solutions, um, heat protecting conditioning spray, smoothing spray. I'm sorry. Um, I love this stuff. Okay. When I first bought it, I hated this stuff. <laughs> I have very, very fine, thin hair, and I am losing my hair for reasons that will come about in this channel because it's one of the reasons I'm making this channel. Um, and this is very greasy when it first goes on. And it's not greasy, it, it has oils in it to protect your hair, and so it looks greasy. That's why I'm saying greasy. Um, and so when I first put it on, I was like, oh, this is terrible. Cause if you have fine hair, if you have thin hair, if you have fine and thin hair, you know that grease is the enemy, man. Like my, your hair gets greasy. Like you literally get out of the shower, blow dry your hair, put your deodorant on and then you turn around and you're like a grease slick again. So, but what I learned is the oil and the grease burns off. Okay. When you hit it with the heat of your straightener, you will see smoke. And the smoke is the product kind of burning off and what it leaves behind is the most beautiful, shiny, soft, 
not greasy. Like it burns off all the oil and leaves like the benefits of the oil, I guess probably around the cuticle. I'm not a hairdresser, okay? Um, but I, and my dog is scratching. So if you hear that in the background, I already said there's dogs. So anyway, and I think it just leaves like, I guess a coating maybe of the oils or the benefit of the oils around the cuticle, but I've talked about it way too long already. If you're interested in it, try it, but just know, don't go near your roots with it. Maybe like mid shaft to ends. Um, and it's just bomb. I really, really like it. Sometimes it's hard to find, um, as with a lot of things, I feel like the stocking at Sally is pretty shit. Um, so, oh yeah, there's going to be cussing in this video. I am an average human being who is not overly religious. So I enjoy cussing. I don't know what else to tell you. Anyway, so we've got our heat protected spray. I have a really nice, um, fine tooth comb with a rat tail on the end. I really hate that. I don't like a separator. I don't know what else to call this. Anyway, I got this at a local beauty supply store for three bucks. And let me tell you, best purchase of my life. Um, if you do hairstyles or you work with wigs or you have thick hair, like this is your best friend. You need to get a good quality one. Um, sorry, there's going to be some noise because I'm going to dig through. I have some pins. So these are wig stand pins. They're not, they're actually T pins. They're not specifically for wigs. Sorry, there's gonna be crunching sounds. Um, so they are T pins. They are silver, they're in a T shape. Um, I use them to make sure that my wig is secured to my wig stand so that as I'm pulling the straightener through, it doesn't fall off. It's really annoying. I have a ton of clips. I have a whole bag full. You'll hear me rummaging around for them during this video. Uh -huh. I mean, that's the kind of, anyway. Um, of course, I have my lovely wig. She was Dita before. Um, she's cut into a, currently cut into a horseshoe shape. You can kind of see here. Um, the reason for that is I used to style this wig into vintage hairstyles. Um, and when you're doing vintage hairstyles, you're really not going to get like that perfect look you're looking for unless you have this horseshoe shape. However, now that I am losing my hair in earnest, it's like falling out. As you can see, I have, you know, some parts slash thin slash bald spot showing. Um, I am going to take her to a hairdresser and I'm gonna have them cut this wig into a long bob, a shaggy long bob style with some bangs um, so that I have a really easy wig that I can throw on every day without having to blend my hairline. So all of my wigs at this point are lace fronts and they all do not have bangs, which means whenever I wanna wear them, I, I have to put a fair amount of effort into making sure that they look natural along the hairline. Um, and so that is gonna, that's, that takes up a lot of time in the morning. So I'm gonna have her cut and uh, I'm prepping to take her to the salon. So I'm gonna straighten her out. Um, every hairstylist is different. You should, one, ask, you should always inquire as to whether they'll even cut wigs. And then two, ask them how they prefer it, whether they want it laid as in installed on your head for the cut or whether, which most do because they wanna be able to see the shape of your face and everything, um, whether they want it straight, natural. So this wig is cleaned and air dried. So this is her natural curl pattern and I'm obsessed with it. Like I, what I wouldn't give for this to be my hair. Mm, okay, dreaming over. This is my hair, I own this hair. It belongs to me, right? Yeah. Um, Anyway, so I've got my wig head, I've got my wig, and I have a wig stand. So this is one that connects to a table. So I unscrew this bit, I stick it onto the side of the table, and then I tighten it up like this. And then this part, the wig head has a hole in the bottom, and it just sits on top of this, like this. And it's very helpful. I eventually would like to get a tripod one, but these are cheaper than tripod wig stands. And um, your mama is broke <laughs> because um, I'm a full-time student. So I'm a full-time student and we live on a single income right now, my husband's income. I have worked my entire adult life. Uh, and then I randomly discovered my passion in life and decided to go back to school for it. So again, I'll talk about that a little bit more. And as videos progress, you'll get to know me more. So anyway, that was a really long introduction. I have my coffee here. It's adorable, it's in a mug. If you can't read it, I don't know if it will be backwards for you or not. 
but it says let your conscious be your guide um it's and it has a little conscious which is um a uh, mexican sweet bread so obviously i live in texas i am not from a state where there is a large minority population of any kind um but obviously in texas we have a really large uh, mexican population and we have lived here for five years now which is like a long time uh, for us and so I have learned so much about Mexican culture and I love and respect it in a way that I never did before um, I'm still learning I my intentions will always be positive um, I think that's important to say in the very beginning of this video um, I believe that every human being deserves dignity and I believe that everyone should be treated with respect I hope that you guys all treat me with respect <laughs> Um, and also do me the courtesy of letting me know if I cross a line or I say something that's upsetting. Um, my intention is never to hurt anyone. Car alarm. Thank you. Thank you for that. Uh, my intention is not to hurt anyone. And I can't grow and learn as, if, as a person if you don't share with me um, ways in which I have room to improve. So um, I just want to put that out there. So I've got my coffee which is Javalia. Um, this is my, this is currently my favorite coffee brand and we get these big ass bags from Amazon cause they're a lot cheaper. So I get them from Amazon on an auto ship. And then I have um, some creamer in my coffee. I, so usually I drink my coffee black when I stopped being able to eat dairy anymore. I was like, whatever, this is too much of a pain. And at the time, like this was back in 2010 and there just weren't a lot of non-dairy creamers available at restaurants or coffee shops or whatever. Um, anyway, but this was at my local grocery store in Texas, our grocery store is HEB. I'm sure it will come up. I will talk about HEB a lot because like most current Texans, um, I'm obsessed with it. But anyway, so it's the Khalifa Farms. I think it's yeah, Califia, I think is how it's pronounced, Farms. They're almond milk creamer and it's in pumpkin spice and it just makes me happy. It's really good. I use the tiniest amount because it's crazy sweet, too sweet for me. I don't like a lot of super sweet things and sugar exacerbates my medical conditions. So I try to be like consequences, right? Like you I just toe the line so that I don't hate myself later. That's, that's pretty much it. Anyway, so there is going to be a quick cut here because I'm going to get everything ready to start straightening and get to talking about myself. So that was a 13 minute introduction. If you made it this far, woo, good for you. Dolly's with you. She's with me. She's with everyone because Dolly is the spirit of everyone forever. Okay. Anyway, so here we go. Okay, so I wanted to show you a little bit about this wig. It is a lace front. It is a 13 by 6. It's from Aff Sister Wig. It has two clips on the temples, one in the back, and adjustable straps there that you can see. Um, this wig was originally 14 inches. Um, it um, is human hair. I think I paid $156 when I bought it, but I'm looking at the website now and it is actually $239 now. I bought it uh, at 130% density and it is a 21 inch cap. So that's just some details about her. Okay, I think we are ready to get started. Um, it's really hard. I'm filming on an iPhone, so um, getting everything in frame is hard. So I'm just going to apologize for it being like half of her and half of me. Um, I will do my best to figure it out again. This is my first YouTube video and I don't have any money. And the only reason I have a microphone is because I have a podcast with a friend of mine. Um, it has not been released yet. So this is, will be like a little teaser maybe. I don't know if I'll release these YouTube videos before then. But um, anyway, so let's get started. Uh, my flat iron is hot. I'm going to just kind of um, separate the wig for right now into sections so that as I'm going, I'm not kind of all over the place and missing things. I'm not necessarily going to talk you through what I'm doing. All of you know how to straighten hair, I would, I would think, if you don't. I'm sure there are a million YouTube videos that can teach you that are better than me because I'm not a professional. So, uh, yeah, I am originally from North Carolina, like I said. Um, I kind of grew up all over the state, to be completely honest. Um, I was born kind of in the Piedmont region. Um, and we lived there until I was probably four or five, and then we moved to Robbinsville in the mountainous region. The Piedmont area is closer to the coast, 
Um, it's kind of in the mid slash coastal region of North Carolina. You have coastal Piedmont mountains. Um, and then we moved to Robbinsville, which is very much the mountains. It's like just east of the Tennessee line. You're basically in Tennessee. Um, and then uh, there was some family drama and some business drama all in one. Woo, girl, I'm going to tell you, like, mm, crazy. I got some family drama stories, as most people from the South do. Um, and so we had nothing. We had no money. We didn't know what we were going to do. And there was drama with my mom's family because one of her um, sisters had actually essentially put us in this position um, by stealing. So we didn't want to stay in Robbinsville. They didn't want to stay in Robbinsville. I was very young. I was like six or seven. Um, and we had nowhere to go. So we moved back to North Carolina. We moved to kind of the south um, and central region to a city that I guess you could call it a suburb of Charlotte. It's a little bit further to far to be considered a suburb, but it's called Lincolnton, technically Pumpkin Center. North Carolina, um, where my dad's mother and father lived, and they agreed to let us live with them. So at this point, we were technically homeless, but thankfully, because we had the privilege of having family who was able to take us in and care for us, we lived with them for a while. So um, my dad got a job, my mom got a job, we lived with my grandparents for I'm not really sure how long. To be honest, um, I mean, I loved it. I loved my grandparents, and they lived on a farm, so it was, like, amazing. And we were very familiar with this farm. I mean, we had spent weekends, holidays, um, summers, all kinds of places. So, basically, Robbinsville and Lincolnton, I kind of think of as my home, really, because it's kind of the stable place. Like, it's the place that my entire life we always went um, to have holidays, Christmas, Thanksgiving, summers. Like, it was... It was where we went, those two towns. So eventually my dad got a job in Charlotte, a really good job, and we moved to Charlotte. And I spent most of my life based in Charlotte. So um, I think we were like, I was eight or nine whenever we moved to Charlotte and I stayed there till I graduated high school, just hopping between Lincolnton and Robbinsville for whatever, summer camps. Sometimes I'd spend the whole summer in Robbinsville. So that kind of explains where I'm from. When people ask me like where I'm from, I basically just say North Carolina. <laughs> um, I did go to high school in uh, the Gas House, Gastonia, which is a, definitely a suburb of Charlotte. And that is where I met my husband. We met uh, when I was 15 and he was 16 and we went on some dates and uh, he asked me to officially be his girlfriend on my 16th birthday. Um, We've been together ever since. Like, it's just, it's easy. It makes sense. You can see that smoke coming from the... Um, it's easy. It makes sense. I love him. We have a great life. We have two dogs um, and no kids. We don't plan on ever having kids. Um, not because we don't like kids. In fact, I love children. Um, and my intention really is to work with kids um, at what I'm going to school for. But... Uh, yeah, so so my choice, mine and my husband's choice both not to have kids, because it is a choice for both of us, uh, is not at all indicative of how we feel about kids. We love kids. Our choice to not have kids has everything to do with how we feel about the identity of being mother and the identity of being father. Um, it's a really hard thing to explain, just like it's a really hard thing to explain wanting to have kids. You know, if someone point blank says, well, how did you know? Like, what is it that tells you? Like, it's just a feeling. And I kind of always knew, like, growing up as a, as a child, I never liked baby dolls. <laughs> I loved Barbies, but I didn't like baby dolls. I never liked playing house. I never wanted to play mom. If we played school, I didn't really want to be in a position of authority, <laughs> usually. Um, so, yeah, we just, it's just not our thing. But again, I absolutely adore being an aunt. I have five um, or I'm sorry, four nephews right now, and I love them all dearly. Um, sorry, the AC unit just kicked on. Again, not a professional operation here, people. <laughs> um, anyway, so that's that's kind of that. Um, I'm always more than happy to talk about it. I have a lot of friends, actually, way more friends than I did when I was younger. Um, who also don't want to have kids, but I also think part of that has to do with moving away from the Southeast. I think living in the Southeast, uh, Southeastern United States, there is really just a commitment to traditional family values or what they perceive as traditional 
family values. There is a commitment to uh, keeping up appearances. There is a commitment to fulfilling people's expectations um, pretty much at, at a lot of costs. At, I would say at all costs for some people, not all people. Um, and I think moving away from that, um, it was good for me and it allowed me to meet amazing women. Oh my God, y'all. I'm going to have to, I'm eventually going to tell you about the women in my life because I have incredible mentors. I have incredible family. I have incredible friends that just challenge me to be a better person and do my best and to, I don't know, just be like a good human being. It's incredible. That's coming from someone who had no friends. Um, I was really shy. I experienced a lot of severe uh, anxiety and depression as a high schooler and middle schooler and just kind of crumpled under the pressure really and so I didn't think, like, I didn't think having friends who were girls was going to be something that was possible because I never met girls that I really liked. Or, like, I met girls I liked. There are a lot of incredible people. Um, but I just, I didn't have a lot of friends. We'll just put it that way. <laughs> um, anyway, so definitely going to have to bring those up. But, yeah, so my husband and I met in high school. We dated through high school when I, so he graduated the year before me. And when I got ready to graduate high school... <laughs> Being my pragmatic self, I was like, uh, we had what we call the Jeep conversation where uh, we sat in his car, which was a Jeep chair, an old Jeep Cherokee. And I just said, look, like we got to figure it out. Like, what are you doing? Like, I'm going to college. I applied to college and that's my plan. You know, you, you have to have a plan too. Like, what are you going to do? And he was like, okay, you know, give me some time to think about what I want. So... Essentially, he comes back and he says, I figured out what I want to do. And I'm like, great, what is it? And he says he wants to go in the military, the U.S. military. And I just busted out laughing because our whole time dating, we had made jokes about that because his whole family is a military family. His mom um, was in the Air Force. His dad was in the Navy. And yes, I just didn't see it coming. But um, I, sh I really should have because my husband is the most like genuine, sincere person. Of course, he wants to do something like that. So um, he joined the military. I'm not gonna give a lot of information about that. It makes him uncomfortable and it makes me uncomfortable. But um, essentially, I, and I went off to college. So I got accepted to um, a college in Charleston, South Carolina um, called Charleston Southern. It was a Christian, um, Protestant Christian. I think they're actually, or they used to be affiliated with uh, Baptist, the Baptist, um, Christian Dominion I don't know like how they're classified or whatever anyway and I grew up Southern Baptist I grew up as Southern Baptist as you can possibly grow up um, my dad's father was a Southern Baptist pastor preacher my dad's brother became a Southern Baptist preacher my aunt married a Southern Baptist preacher I have cousins who regularly preach as guest preachers um, my dad is the only one in his family who is not a pastor. However, he has been a deacon or elder in every church we've ever been to. And I went to church every Sunday, Sunday night and Wednesday night of my life. Okay. I cannot remember a time when I was not ill that I missed a church service. Um, I mean, I did it all. I went to Jesus summer camps, Christian summer camps. I handed out tracts. I, I mean, just the whole, the whole nine. I am no longer a Baptist. I no longer um, support really organized religion, Protestant, Christian, organized religion, pretty much at all. Um, I still believe in God. I have very strong roots, and I've experienced too many, too many things in my life um, between me and God for me not to believe in God and in a higher power, but... As far as dogma is concerned, I really struggle with it. I struggle with the homophobia aspect. I struggle with the sexism aspect. I struggle with um, a lot of things. Just honestly, what it comes down to for me is like the hypocritical aspect. A lot of, anyway. Um, I So as of right now, I don't identify with anything. Um, dogmatically, I'm probably closest to a Quaker. And I am kind of looking into Quakerism just as something. It is nice to have a dogma, not a dogma, but a theology to fall back on um, whenever you kind of need a direction or a wisdom. But again, I, I'm very careful about what I trust. Um, anyway, so that's kind of where I am religiously, I guess. Not Baptist anymore. 
But anyway, so I went to Charleston Southern, which was a Baptist uh, organization because I wanted to study psychology. And when you are raised in religion and you want to study psychology, um, <clears throat> people in the church will say, oh, well, you definitely need to study it through a religious lens. Otherwise, you're going to be like Sigmund Freud. You're going to be a pervert, cocaine addict. <laughs> um, so I did exactly what I was told. And I went to Charleston Southern. Um, was not a fan, not a fan at all, um, of Charleston Southern. I had some, whoo, I had some experiences there, um, <clears throat> especially with people in positions of authority, uh, the Dean of Housing and things like that, uh, but it was kind of a mess, and anyway, if you hear purring in the background, it's the fan on my computer. Anyway, so I did my thing, man, went to school, and that was a trip because I was never academically gifted. I really, really struggled in school. Um, I have um, dyscalculia, which is a mathematical learning disability, but I was not diagnosed with that at the time. And so I just basically really, really, really struggled in math. I probably shouldn't have graduated high school, but I did. Um, and uh, I just always thought I was dumb. I always thought I was dumb. I never made good grades. I really struggled. I think a, a ton of it, I know for sure, had to do with anxiety and depression. Um, but I didn't know that at the time. And honestly, in the 90s, that wasn't a thing. You didn't worry about kids being anxious. It was like everybody goes through what you go through in high school, and it is what it is. So I went to college terrified. I actually really wanted to go to cosmetology school. But that is what everyone expected me to do. And I have always been a stubborn ass. <laughs> who uh, just hated basically people assuming that they knew me or knew what I was gonna do. So I didn't. I got accepted to a four-year university and off I went. Um, and I was absolutely shitting my pants because I thought, I was terrified that I would fail. And if I failed, I would have to move back to Charlotte and see all my friends and they would all know that I had failed and I didn't want to be a failure because again I felt like that's what people expected and also it's embarrassing I, I thought that it was embarrassing it's not it's not at all there are a lot of reasons why people's first choice college or first choice post high school plans don't work out um, so anyway but lo and behold I made straight A's <laughs> um, I had a 4.0 and maintained a very good grade point average the whole time I was there. I loved psychology classes, um, and I realized that I'm, I wasn't dumb. <laughs> Truthfully, it was like kind of life-changing for me. I realized I wasn't dumb. I realized that a lot of the issues that kept me from succeeding in high school had a lot to do with the pressure um, to do well, the comparisons, um, what people thought of me, and things like that. So, yeah, I did really well. But in my uh, third semester, my husband had finished his basic training and his was coming to the end of his technical training, and he got orders to his first assignment. And I called, he called me, and I said, hey, did you get your assignment? Where are you going? Um, at this point, we were engaged, um, and our plan had been to get married, uh, a, like, about six months after he got to wherever his new station was. Um, because we, I would finish my, finish up my semester in school, get transferred to wherever he was, get everything in order, we'd have our wedding, and then I would move to wherever he was. Um, and he said, yeah, I got it. Are you sure you're ready? Are you sure you want to hear? And I was like, yeah. And he was like, we got orders to England. And I was like, New England? And he was like, no, the old one. <laughs> and, um, I was so excited. I mean... Everybody joins the military to travel, right? Like, that's what we say. But nobody actually gets to, like, travel. Like, especially your very first out-the-gate assignment. I'm like, I thought for sure we were going to be in Maryland. If we were really unlucky, we'd be, you know, in, like, Georgia. <laughs> like, you know, join the military to travel in North Carolina and end up in Georgia is, like, not really ideal. But that's kind of what I expected. And what he expected. So we were just so excited. Um, I never felt attached to home. I've always been an adventurer. I love change. The idea of staring at the same four walls like for the foreseeable future just like stresses me out. Um, so then I was faced with this decision like, well, I don't want to miss 
six months of this amazing adventure, you know, that you're going to get to have. <laughs> I want an adventure too. So we talked about it and, um, you know, obviously kind of agreed. He didn't want to be without me. I didn't want to be without him. So I was like, look, I'm going to finish this semester and we will get, you know, legally married, paper married, and I'll move to England. Like, I want to have an adventure too. So <laughs> we got married by proxy. His, his, uh, he was in Texas at the time. And in Texas, both parties do not have to be present for you to get married. Let me just repeat that. In Texas... Both parties do not have to be present to get married. In fact, neither party has to be present to get married. So he sent me some paperwork from the courthouse and I um, I signed this paperwork and sent a photocopy of my ID. And uh, yeah, he went to the courthouse and this was in 2008 with his roommate, Mr. Well, I guess I probably shouldn't say his name just in case, but Cameron was his first name. Um, who is a man, obviously, and Cameron stood in as my proxy. So if you saw two men getting married in Texas way before the legalization of gay marriage, then it was getting married by proxy. So Cameron, his his lovely roommate, um, stood in and literally said my vows for me as me, and we were legally married while I was in North Carolina. Um, my mom, I knew, so I kind of had my big wedding for my mom. I also had it for myself. I always dreamed of having a big wedding and everything, but like, mm. anyway, so I waited till the postman came and took everything the day that I sent it off because I was afraid she would run, run out to the mailbox and take it because she wouldn't want me to get married like that. Um, even though she absolutely adored, adored my husband. She's past now. That's why I'm talking past tense. Um, or sometimes my tense is messed up. It's weird. Um, anyway, so yeah, we moved to England. Absolutely loved it. From England, we went to Florida for six months. Um, from Florida, we went to Japan. And from Japan, we came to Texas. And we've been in Texas ever since. So those are the places that I've lived. I really enjoy Texas. But I'm also very much the type of person that your experience, especially with the military... Okay, that's not fair. That's not what I want to say. Your experience... Um, your experiences of a new place where you live have a lot to do with your attitude. And that is obviously not saying that you can't experience something traumatic or something terrible that changes your your view. That's not what I mean. Um, I just mean there's something, you can find things to really enjoy about almost any place that you are if you try. And so that's, yeah, that's what I, yeah. Um, Things that I want to talk about on my channel um, over the coming, coming, whatever, how many, who knows what. Um, one is uh, my school. So I always just worked whatever job I could find. Um, I left school in my third semester, like I said, so I did not have a bachelor's degree or any degree other than a high school diploma whenever we moved to England. And then I tried to go to school online, but online school in 2008 was rough. Um, so I did not, I just stopped. I was like, this is crazy. I actually enjoy school and I don't want to hate every second of trying to get this degree for what, why? Because I don't want to be behind my peers and like they're all getting their degree and I'm not. Like I am who I am and I live in England and I'm getting to travel the world and I'm just going to enjoy my time doing that. So I just got a job, an amazing job with an amazing woman who literally molded me into an employee. I knew nothing. I never had a real job. <laughs> I had no attention to detail, um, and she believed in me, gave me a job. Her name is Emma, and I am eternally grateful to her for so many things. She was a certified financial planner, so in addition to teaching me how to be a good employee, she also helped me get my finances in order even when we were really, really young. And I'm just like, I can't, like, I. she changed my life, and she's also one of the Um, one of the first women that I met, other than, of course, my mother, who just showed me that, like, you can do anything. You can do anything. I mean, this woman ran her own branch of a business. She <laughs> would win awards and meet standards every month. 
She also was a, was a mom. She had two children, um, and her husband worked full-time. She worked full-time, so she was managing all the things you do as a mother while also working full-time. And she went to school full-time, online. Like, she, plus volunteering and all this stuff, I mean, she was an absolute fucking powerhouse. And I think a lot of my commitment and dedication and just kind of just understanding that you got to hustle, bitch. Like, if you want to make it in anything, you have to hustle. Um, and just, like, understanding that success takes sacrifice. I think that's what I saw from her. And I carry that with me to this day. So I'm just so thankful. Anyway, but I got a, I got a job. And I worked those type of jobs the whole time. Um, Florida, um, Japan. I was just basically making money to, one, bring in a supplemental income for my husband and I, and then also so that we had money to travel. So um, we traveled. We had an amazing life. I regret nothing um, not, as far as not going to school. And you have to understand that, like, at the time, of course, I was really young. I was 23. And um, I just felt all this pressure to go to college and graduate on time and hear my friends like and while we were in Japan I had friends graduating with their MBA I had one friend graduating with their PhD like and I'm over here without a bachelor's and just feeling like I'm some kind of you know failure or whatever which is crazy um anyway so that's that's kind of how how it was I the other things um Oh, I guess I was talking about, sorry, things I wanted to talk about on my channel. Also, like, how just, mm, look at that shine. <laughs> anyway, um, so when we moved to Texas, I finally decided I wanted to go back to school because I could go face-to-face. -face. And uh, so I enrolled in a university here that offered um, night and weekend classes because I was also still working full-time. Um, and I went to school full-time and worked full-time for three years to finish my degree. Um, I graduated with my degree in psychology and then had to figure out what else I wanted to do because you can't do a whole lot with just a degree in psychology as far as like anything specialized. You can do a ton with a degree in psychology, but most of it is not actually like psychology. <laughs> um, and I discovered occupational therapy and when I googled it it was just on a list of like the best careers with the most job satisfaction and best um, outlook as far as job creation and pay and so I was like okay cool what's occupational therapy and I tried to look it up and when you read about occupational therapy online it's very it's hard to figure out it's hard to visualize so I found that my city San Antonio had a occupational therapy program um, at a University of Texas satellite school here, um, a health health school here. And so I, they had an open house and I decided to go because I thought, you know, how better to figure out what the heck occupational therapy is than by listening to people. So it turns out that this kind of open house had was a lot more geared towards people who are trying to apply to just kind of tell people what they're looking for because it's extremely competitive. I realized at this open house that it was going to be a long road if I really wanted to do occupational therapy. So I um, uh, I was intimidated at first and as I listened to the stories of the students and what they, why they did it and why they wanted to do it, I completely fell in love. I sat in the middle of a lecture hall at Uni University of Texas Health Science Center and cried. I just cried. There were tears streaming down my face because I just didn't ever see myself as someone who was going to find a career that they were really passionate about, even though I wanted that so badly. Who doesn't? Everybody wants... If you had to choose between a job you didn't like or a job you liked, wouldn't you want to do a job you liked? Um, but to have the privilege of finding something that I was passionate about was like, dang. So I was really excited about it. Um, and then I spent the next three years trying to do everything I needed to do to complete the prereqs so that I could apply for the program. Um, it was incredibly stressful. I will talk more about that in, in other podcast, I mean podcasts, in other YouTube videos um, because I'm sure there's um, aspiring OTs out there or people who are just interested in the idea of OT and I'll talk about it more. But um, So I want to talk about OT on this channel. I want to talk about, you know, <laughs> the struggles of being a military spouse on this channel. 
I want to talk about health on this channel. Um, I have kind of a crazy health story. I currently live with a pretty severe unknown illness. Um, I do not have a diagnosis and that makes my life extremely hard. Um, my illness tends to come in, um, re in a relapsing remitting style a little bit. Um, I don't know, like, like a mess. So I have times when I'm in a flare and I'm very, very ill and I have times when I am not and I feel relatively normal, like a normal human being. Um, I've been tested for a lot of stuff and all of it comes back negative. I live my life in limbo. Um, I don't have access to any public um, resources really because I don't have a diagnosis. It makes my life really hard. Um, and also it feels very lonely. It feels very sad. I struggle with imposter syndrome a lot. Like, okay, well, if all these doctors are saying there's nothing wrong with me, then then is there something wrong with me? Is this all in my head? And then I have a day where I literally can't walk and I think, yep, I'm actually ill. <laughs> um, obviously, I've already mentioned that I have hair loss. Um, don't know what that's about either. Um, so I just have had to find a lot of ways to cope with it. I have a great Counselor, finally, I have been through many counselors. That's another video I'm gonna make, is like just surviving the search for a good counselor or a good psychologist is like, like how can there be so many? Well, I know exactly why there's so many crappy psychologists out there and getting a degree in psychology, you learn why. And I think you'll all agree with me, but that can be another video for another time. Um, I don't think I mentioned how old I am. So I am 31, I'm terrible at knowing how old I am. Basically past the age of like 24, I never know how old I am. Um, I don't really like subscribe to age all that much. Um, but I'm pretty sure I'm 31. I'm gonna be 32 next year. Um, I am going back to school in January. I did have to take a year long leave of absence because I came into a period of um, relapse with my illness, which made me quite ill and I was unable to keep up with my studies. So I took a year uh, sabbatical so that I can focus on my health and rest and I will be returning to school in January. Um, my hope is that I can pre-record some videos in case I'm like, oh. <laughs> but yeah, I have an amazing sister. She and I are best friends. We hated each other growing up, hated. And the word hate is very strong. I will use it. I mean, it's just who I am. Um, but like legitimately we hated each other and now we are best friends. <laughs> um, I am encouraging her to make videos. Um, in fact, we haven't made like an open promise to each other, but we did kind of like just sit down and make the video. Just do it. Fuck, just do it. <laughs> so that's kind of why I'm doing it. I hope she does it too. Um, because she's amazing. Um, she has one child, Indy. Oh, my nephew, Indy Bear, he's the absolute sweetest. I hope she makes a channel because I think a lot of mothers would benefit from her story. Um, Indy has a series of critical heart defects called Tetralogy of Fallot. They're very, very, very serious. Um, in addition to that, he has um, an, a genetic illness called DeGeorge's syndrome, which is quite common to occur in tandem with Tetralogy of Fallot. But she goes through a lot, um, and she's an amazing person. She has great sense of style. Um, I'll probably do some vlogs. I'm going to decorate for Christmas here soon. Is it the first week of November or second week of November? Yes, it is. Is it 2020? It still fucking is. And am I going to decorate for Christmas? Yes, I am. So I might vlog that a little bit. I try to eat plant-based as much as possible, but my husband is an aspiring chef. So um, I eat what he makes because it's amazing. Um, but I do have quite a few vegan hacks, recipes, and things like that and that I'm sure I'll talk about. And I'll try to do some blogs too with like some cooking, cooking stuff. But yeah, this is going to be a long video. Um, I'm not quite done. I'm going to wrap up this last section of hair. So just might speed through this. Done. So here is the finished product. We have some crazy flyaways and some like big old um, volume here on the top. And it's not perfect. See, missed a couple spots. 
But since she's going to get a haircut, it didn't really need to be perfect. It just needed to be um, kind of straight. She's still very thick. She's got a lot of, a ton of flyaways, um, as you can see. So these are all things that um, I'm gonna deal with at the salon. She's gonna be getting some bangs, but yeah. Um, thank you so much for joining me for my very first YouTube video. Uh, it's really long. It's a lot about me. Um, this is probably a video people might come back to later on to get to know me, I imagine. Um, and that's okay. So anyway, I don't have an intro or an outro yet. So um, really just want to say it's 2020. So stay safe. Don't get complacent. Um, I want everybody to be healthy. Yesterday, we just got the news that there is a 90% um, effective vaccine. So the hope uh, I think they said the plan was by by next summer, summer of 2021, we would be able to be in a good progression towards getting everyone vaccinated with a plan. So anyway, uh, thank you uh, to all of my non-existent followers. I believe that you're going to be there. <laughs> um, and I'll see you next time. Bye.